We have a quorum, right? It <laughs> looks empty out there. It does. What's going on? You got a quorum? It's after 4.30, so we're going to get started. We have a quorum. Uh, the <clears throat> April 11, 2023 Committee on Ways and Means is now called to order. I will call on Council Member Pell to give us the invocation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. God of the slain, God of the murdered, and the victim. The voice of lamentation echoes across the land. Wailing beside graves open too soon, weeping beside stains of blood from the dead and the injured, pouring forth from bullet wounds, the child shot, the suicide, the domestic assault, the gang violence, the mass murder, the long night of death made easy by guns and semi-automatic weapons, the long night of sorrow made easy by reckless access to machines of slaughter. Bless those who are mourning the dead, grant them solace and comfort. Bless those who are healing from the trauma of gun violence. Grant them lives of health and prosperity, joy and peace. Blessed are you, God of all being, who summons us to choose life first. Choose life, above all, choose life. Amen. March 28, 2023. Do I hear? It's moved, moved and properly, properly moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Bids and purchases. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Yes, council member. Uh, 3C, can someone just fill me in? Okay. I don't have my 3C. 3C, the planning department and contract for the peninsula plan. Mr. Summerfield. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. So this is the Peninsula Plan. This was approved in the as a part of the budget cycle in 2022. Um, as we were doing the research for that and preparing to put out that RFP, we realized that we were just not funded enough. And so as a part of the 23 budget uh, cycle, this council authorized some additional funding. This would be uh, allow us to uh, get that contract out now that we have the full funding package available. Uh, this contract is not for the full current appropriation, um, but we do believe there'll be some additional services we may need through the life of that project. So additional funds will be needed? They've already been appropriated. Uh -huh. uh, so this is not the, the contract that we're putting uh, that you would be awarding here is not for the full sum of funds that have been appropriated by the council for the project. And so we do have funds available should we need uh, any additional services uh, as that project moves forward. Okay, thank you. Yes. So this is technically a draw. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Can I just make a quick yes. comment? Because I sat on that selection committee was part of that request for additional funding. One of the things that we realized when we went through the process of selecting the team that was going to do this work is that they probably needed to beef up their tr their transportation, their transit side of things. And so we asked this council to at least have some monies there. So as they go through the process that they need to add some additional resources to look at mobility and transportation, they could do it. So. Thanks for that clarification, Councilman Seeking. Uh, any further discussion on bids and purchases? If not all in favor, say aye. The ayes have it. Item four. Move for second. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item five, Second. moved and properly second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Item seven, move for six. six. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I think number five was actually amended, and Andrea Hayward was going to address that online. It's been amended. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is anyone here? Andrea. Hi, uh, yes, we are actually requesting an amendment for number six. Um, so this grant is for continuation funding for our elder advocate and resource specialist positions for VOCA. 
um, we are now requesting $145,058.23 from the grantor with a 20% match required of $29,011.65. That's number six. Yes, that's correct. You want to hear the numbers again? Could you repeat the numbers again for me? Sure. So we're requesting $145,058.23 from the grantor. And there's a 20% match of $29,011.65. Thank you. Second. All in favor of number six as amended, say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Item seven, stormwater management approval. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. The ayes have it. Item eight, parks capital Move project. approval. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item nine. Planning and sustainability. Move for approval. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm going to call on Chairman Appel for the Committee on Real Estate. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Committee on Real Estate met yesterday afternoon at four o'clock, and we covered a lot of ground. Uh, the first item up was approval of uh, the mayor to execute a quick claim deed to Charleston Water Systems. This is in connection with a piece of property between St. Margaret, Margaret and Grove Street over in Wagner Terrace. This is um, a uh, Charleston Water Systems um, pump station. And it turns out that the city owns property that's part of the pump station. And uh, everybody felt like it would be more efficient for the property to be owned entirely by uh, CWS. And that's what uh, we approved. And the deed to the city uh, originally limited the use of that property to a pump station. So it significantly limited uh, the value in the use. Um, next item on the agenda was an amendment to our urban greenbelt uh, application. This is to increase uh, the application uh, funding request by $12,360. Um, this is to fund some additional due diligence costs associated with looking at um, four new parcels, all of which have been given to us by the Beach Company uh, over here in West Ashley. So we want to give a big shout out and thanks to the Beach Company and John Darby. Uh, this will significantly um, increase the size of this park over in West Ashley. And this is another uh, waterfront uh, or water access park over in West Ashley. So between this, uh, Carr Richardson, WPAL, um, we're we're uh, running out of um, um, good things to say about the parks that we're doing in, in West Ashley, especially waterfront. That all um, passed unanimously as well. And then we have considered and unanimously approved uh, an amend a third addendum to the MOU between the city and the Friends of the Low Line. And this is to allocate $150,000 of previously approved funds that were not ever used to uh, go towards the engineering work that has to happen as this project moves forward. Uh, originally, council approved $150,000 uh, out of the Cooper River Bridge TIF for design work. As it turns out, uh, part of that federal grant that we got um, is going to pay for that design work. So that money never needed to be spent. So the 150 that we originally allocated never got spent. We're going to shift this amendment shifts that funding to the engineering costs um, that are necessary to move that project forward. Uh, that passed unanimously. And then we considered four um, annexations, three of which are uh, residential. The final one is uh, commercial, the 912 Savannah Highway uh, property. All of those unanimously passed. We also confirmed that the Christopher Morgan at 2223 North Dallerton Circle is not our Christopher Morgan. He's been a city resident for 30 years. Just wanted to clear the record on that. Um, but we're happy to have as many Christopher Morgans as, as, as whoever wants to join the city. Um, those annexations unanimously were approved. Then we considered a fourth amendment to the MOU between the city of Charleston and Landmark Enterprises. This was um, an amended uh, resolution to grant a 60-day extension through June 21st 
uh, to Landmark, the purpose of which uh, th this extension is to give Landmark some additional time to come up with the options and alternatives that um, the ad hoc committee uh, recommended at our last uh, ad hoc committee meeting. This will give them the time to uh, go back to the drawing board, come up with some additional ideas so we can do some shopping. Um, and uh, we approve that measure uh, by a vote of three to one. So grants them some additional time. There's no additional um, costs or other kind of obligation that's associated with that. Um, and then finally, we approved uh, an MOU uh, with Charleston County regarding uh, the repaving of the Riverland Terrace boat landing. Um, and it turns out we had originally reached an agreement with the county and the James Island Public Service District to do some pretty significant paving over there by Plymouth Park and the boat landing. Um, this, amend, this new MOU um, significantly reduces the amount of money the city has to spend due to some extremely detailed technicality in state law over the proper use of um, these funds, which I'm not going to bore anybody with, but for all the people who um, have dropped their boat into uh, the Wapu Cut over there, uh, having a nice paved um, entry point uh, and retrieval point is going to be a lot, uh, it's going to be well, well received there for sure. And with that, uh, that concludes my report, and I move that it be uh, approved as amended. Been moved and properly seconded, Mayor Tecklenburg. So um, just to let y'all know sometimes how coincidences can work out. When we had that Greenbelt application for uh, Woodmere for the one parcel, uh, we approved it. This was some months ago, and, and uh, Councilmember Waring, I think it was you, that mentioned that Beach Company owned the property across from there. I never thought to look. And, um, and I checked, and sure enough, and it was just a coincidence or a God thing. Uh, Mr. Darby called me the next morning about the Emanuel uh, Memorial, um, some matter with that. And I said, do y'all own that property over there? He said, yeah, we'll be glad to give it to you because we can't uh, do anything with it. I guess they had been, it had been part of original development of that neighborhood. So he said, we'll, we'll give you a quick claim deed to it. And um, it's mostly a water feature. I mean, you can't, um, you can't develop it. Uh, um, but anyway, it was awfully nice, and the way it worked out was was was, was very nice as well. Thank you. I, I and, wanna, I, and I I think I wanna, that I want to thank the mayor for his input on that because let me tell you, there's a lot of excitement uh, in the neighborhood behind the um, Jewish community. I still call it the Jewish Community Center, but uh, Montclair Drive and all back in there. Yeah. Apart, District Seven is primarily an interior district. You all have heard me say this before. Anytime any of you all have a waterfront features in your area, I'll, I'm always for it, so our people can go and enjoy it. But this time we're gonna to get to invite you all to our neighborhood for, to enjoy a water feature that has a park on it. So uh, the beach company did something similar, if you remember, Mayor, in Longborough. They did the same thing. Gave us, yes, yes. Um, council member, um, Parker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I may have an old, I know maybe the real estate agenda was updated. Can you tell me about the park improvements again? The Plymouth Park MOU? Um, or so it's not for Plymouth Park. It's just for the um, the paving of the road there leading into the boat landing. What is the city's contribution you said? So it was originally going to be like $30,000. Now it's down to five. And um, 5,500. Okay, so thank you. We were able to save some coin and we're still gonna get the project done. Council member seeking. Item C on the low line. I actually was in Miami not too long ago and um, I actually sent the mayor a couple of pictures from the underline, which is if you go to Miami, it's cool, same kind of concept. And when I got back, I ran into a board member of the low line. And when I finished the conversation with that person, I was a little confused as to what's going on with that. So can we get a update maybe on where we are with the low line in terms of design, money spent? I know there's some grant money's coming in. Can we just sort of somewhere in some agenda in front of some committee or somewhere get an update? We'll send that to Parks and Rec and it great. can come to here. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, a little different. Mount Pleasant has a linear park off of Pitt Street. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Yeah. Great. 
Any, yes, council member Shay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, if I could address um, our last item, the, the resolution to extend the fourth amendment uh, with landmark to June 21. Um, we've uh, had an executive session um, on this uh, very, very question. Um, uh, I had met with uh, council member Bowden, council member Pell and council member um, Waring several weeks ago when we agreed to form a ad hoc committee to address this, uh, this issue and dealing with this potential uh, um, extension. Um, following uh, that meeting and following the first meeting that we had with the this ad hoc committee, which included Council Member Waring, Council Member Seeking, yourself, me, and Council Member Appel, we then agreed to have in a full meeting of council to discuss this uh, potential extension. Um, and out of that executive uh, session, we heard very loud and clear some of the objections um, to this memorandum as it stood right now. So what is before you today is an extension of 60 days to allow Landmark um, an opportunity to come back to address the, the vast majority of those questions that we had coming out of the executive session. Um, this will be the first time, while the public has received the initial designs um, of this project over on Sumar Street, um, they have not had the opportunity to see what this total package will cost. And I know there are objections to the cost of, of doing that, particularly with an underground garage. Um, this project um, that they're proposing to scale down will be very literally returning to one of the initial plans that our in, uh, internal design team had addressed, which did not include a parking garage. Um, it included a surface lot with a civic building in one or maybe two other uh, associated uh, buildings. I can't overstate the importance of the need for this extension. Um, and I'll try to explain it best I can. Um, I've been working on this project since I got elected to council and uh, took office in 2016. Looking at all aspects of how to address the revitalization of West Ashley with the creation of the West Ashley Revitalization Commission. Working with the county and their transportation team to improve what we have dubbed, in which they don't like us to use this word, but the suicide merge. Plans that they have presented time and time again, which were rejected, reviewed, revised, rejected, and then a third plan that's on, on the books, which will address traffic concerns along this corridor from Orange Grove Road down south towards um, Dunbarton, I'm sorry, not Dunbarton, but um, Donahue and Charlestown of States Road, including the major arteries off of San Wittenberg of Amberley Dickinson um, as well. Those plans are incorporated with the initial plans that were presented with Landmark and Landmark's initial presentation um, to us, which has gone before the design review board. Some of that delay was waiting for the county to, to do this. As y'all may recall, members of council who were present early on, um, with one of the other things that spurred this activity was that the Piggly Wiggly, which had closed in 2013, had been vacant since that, that time. And for three years in 2016, Faison uh, owned the property um, and they had a potential settler, I use that word sort of loosely, who proposed a 20 pump gas station. And the community rose up in anger against that and uh, voted and the DRB voted that down. And the worst thing that could have happened at that site was it remaining in private hands and for something like a, a 20 pump gas station for the gateway into the city of Charleston, the gateway to the birthplace of the state of South Carolina to, to have that, that facility there. So the city bought that property. Um, we acquired it and we went out and did a multi facet review process of getting input from the community as to what we should place in, in that. We sent out bids, landmark eventually bid taking what we had done inter internally 
uh, with this project um, and expanded on it and came up with a much more comprehensive, grander scale that is going to cost, from the city's perspective, around $45 million. Part of that expense, a huge portion of that expense, is an underground parking garage, and, and the numbers vary a little bit of what that underground garage could could, talk, could cost, as versus a above ground garage. Um, and as my uh, English teacher would say, meanwhile back at the ranch, um, as this was all progressing, um, Faison started doing major work on um, their portion of the property known as Ashley Landing. And very slowly, they added a building that includes four spaces, four businesses, um, a bank, a ice cream shop, a wing store, um, and um, a pizza place. That has in improved tremendously. Um, a, a pizza beer uh, place has opened up uh, for the down. And in the process of doing all that, they have negotiated with their current tenants, including Publix, to re relocate Publix from its current site to the site closer to Charlestown and States Road, which included um, the where an auto parts store was located and the Dollar Tree is existing. And they moved a pivotal exercise facility to another location so they could relocate Publix at that site. The, the plan is for the phase on to demolish the current Publix once the new Publix is constructed and to build 278 residential units at that location. All told, uh, this plan by Ashley Landing by Faison will be a $150 million private investment into West Ashley. This will be the largest private sector investment in West Ashley, second probably only to um, when Citadel Mall opened up 40 years ago. That's uh, down at the other end of San Wittenberg Boulevard. And I've been in contact with the folks who are uh, been dealing with Ashley Landing. What spurred them is what we've been doing in terms of planning with the Sumar Street project. So here we have with this particular project, and while uh, folks have, have, have shied away from the idea of a $45 million project for a lot of variety of reasons, and some really good reasons, I may add, as to what they're looking at. We have an opportunity now to fulfill the city's um, commitment to this project and allowing Landmark an opportunity to come back with alternatives. And we can direct them as to some of the alternatives. They, they've gotten some really clear direction of what we're looking for, including eliminating a, above or below ground garage, eliminating offices and things of that nature. Give them the 60 day extension. We'll keep this project alive. The, the number of community input into this project has been unprecedented for West Ashley over the years. Um, to vote against this extension is gonna kill this project. I mean, that's just no other way of saying it. And then we go come back to, to square one. We have spent literally since 2016 reviewing this, getting public input on it, putting it out for bid, having anybody who had an interest in doing this come around. Now, there, are, there may be other proposals floating out there as to including maybe closing down Sumar Street, maybe giving Faison the opportunity to come back. That's, those are good ideas. Those are well-intended ideas. But we have to look what's in front of us right now and give Landmark this opportunity of 60 more days to, to get this right and give the public an opportunity to see what we're looking at as, as well. So I, I know this is gonna be a very close vote. Um, I've been polling my, my colleagues. I know where a lot of them, the, them stand on this particular issue. But to give Wes Ashley, I, when I ran for city council, back in 2015, I sit on this proposition, which actually has been neglected and ignored way too long. And that's the truth. We have been neglected and ignored way too long. This project is right in my backyard. Um, I've been very passionate about this project. I've been pushing this project. I've been working with, talking to our, our citizens who could be immediately impacted with this and those outside of the immediate impact. Um, this is an opportunity for us to 
tell the world, to tell our community, to tell West Ashley, we're serious about this. This is a good way of moving forward. If we don't like what Landmark comes back with, we can give them other instructions in the, in the meantime, within the 60 day period. We can make adjustments on this thing. But if we vote this thing down tonight with this presumption that maybe phase on comes back in, maybe we close through Moss Street, maybe, 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 we're, I think that we're going to um, jeopardize to some extent what is going forward with Ashley Landing right now. So I would urge my council members to vote to approve this extension for, for June 21st, 2023, to give everybody an opportunity to look this over. And if it comes back and, and everybody just thinks the same way that we do now, and I think there's a, a possibility that something else may happen, then that's fine. We can do it at that particular point. But here is an opportunity to ask to make a very bold statement of our commitment to West Ashley by doing this and voting for this extension. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilmember Waring. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Shahid, for in particular your institutional knowledge on this. Uh, in particular, going back to the statement of the day when they wanted to put the 20 pump gas station at that intersection was, it looks like anywhere USA. I remember that because I said it. Um, going into the birthplace of South Carolina and, and it shouldn't be a 20 pump gas station. Um, but one thing that I think, I think we all are clear on whether this idea you know, with the $45 million underground parking garage, all of that, whether it fails, that doesn't bring an end to uh, what can happen at the what we call the pig site. Um, because I think we're going to retool, and that's what we're doing right now. One of the things uh, I came in on the tail end, but I'm not necessarily against the uh, uh, extension, uh, Mr. Mayor, because that one thing that our workshop did is I think it kind of like the birthing process. Uh, it's a struggle. But when, when the, the joy of that birth comes through, who isn't happy? Uh, I'll never forget being in the delivery room with my wife and my daughter was born. And I had to part the nurses and the doctors to look at our daughter. And they see that every day. Okay. Uh, but that new life coming in is just that exciting. Uh, and that's the same thing, I think. There's nothing bad that's going to happen with um, the, the pig site. Um, when we got to the point of the workshop, and I think even the mayor made mention, maybe we can take a consideration of a scaled-down version. Uh, I looked at that as new ideas coming in. Uh, and I think that's what we need, new ideas instead of having one idea and one idea only. And that's what, I think that's been the struggle over the last several years, one idea and one idea only. But I have to say this, uh, when I saw the presentation at um, the Amish, uh, old Amish site with Faison, and obviously I've met with them, they've never said to me uh, what they are doing is contingent upon or has anything to do with what we do at uh, the pig site. Um, I looked at that as that's an investment they have run the numbers on that they're ready, willing, and able to make into uh, Ashley Landing site. In other words, that private sector investment is going to happen. Um, my question on this uh, extension is we did an RFQ on, uh, to end up with Landmark. To me, Landmark has done a wonderful job getting getting us to this point because now we as a uh, deliberative body is beginning to crystallize on what, what can and will not happen there, uh, which is a good thing for Wes Ashley. Um, but in the RFQ, and I guess this is a legal question, uh, does it give us the right to give uh, additional duties? I mean, I wanna do, I wanna look at other options, but I don't wanna make a misstep I actually think these these gentlemen have earned their fee. And I'm, and if, if, if somebody says, hey, we have to pay them their fee, I would vote to pay them their fee because it, it was worth whatever we're going to pay them 
to get us to this point of taking in uh, hopefully the best of ideas of what can happen there. Uh, if they're willing to stay on and assist us in that, I think we should pay them. Um, but I don't want to make a, um, if, if I were a person that looked at the RFQ and for whatever reason didn't, didn't, um, didn't bid for whatever reason, and then the RFQ is, is changed uh, to add a, additional services, does that give any legal exposure to the city of Charleston? So, but that's not the case. If we're not stepping into any bad traps on that, um, I voted against it. I was the vote against it, and that was primarily the vote against it. Uh, it's not that I uh, somehow I want to treat landmark harsh. I don't want to do that. Um, I think they've been gentlemen all the way through this. Um, but I do believe that I think they've earned their fee. Um, and if they're willing to assist us, all the better. But um, anyway, I just thought we need to get that answer. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mayor. I, I certainly support this extension, but just for um, um, knowing how that fee works, I believe that uh, they submitted invoices to us for work performed by their subs, Lee Olio and others, and those, in fact, have been paid as we've been going along upon review by Ms. Wharton and our um, yes, uh, finance committee. That is correct. Yeah. Part of the MOU required that they submit invoices for our review and approval. Yeah, so we're not holding money on them right now. So it's not they, they would they would tell you that they've actually spent more time and money getting to this point than 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 was agreed upon in the beginning. But that was at their own choosing. So it's not a six hundred eighty four thousand dollar fee out there somewhere lurking. No, sir. the The amount would be not to exceed $683,500. That would be the amount that they would request at the time this is terminated, if it is terminated. And have we paid any of that to date? No, sir. Okay, thank you. That's, that's the fee I was talking about, Mr. Neal. Um, <clears throat> if I may add, um, I think it is time for us to make a substantial investment in West Ashley. But I'm looking for something world renowned as a gateway. I don't see that yet. Um, the design, man. But for me, the design looks like so many other designs within the city and other places. I'm looking for something world renowned as the gateway to the city. I'm willing to support, but if it's not world renowned, I won't support it, just being upfront. Council Member Seekings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then um, Councilman Brady. So 60 days going forward. How, when did we first sign this MOU, please? So 2021, what we've gotten since 2021 is what we've gotten. I think there was not unanimity, but a majority consensus of what we got, we're not doing. So when y'all voted this resolution, Mr. Chairman, was there any discussion about giving landmark direction as to what they should be doing in the next 60 days and what we expect to get back from them, what the parameters might be, what a reasonable budget might be, any of those things? Or we're just letting them go forward for the next 60 days and come back with some ideas well you're, you're yeah um so uh so i i can tell you that landmark has given us some thoughts um they've got some clear direction based upon what was discussed at the ad hoc uh committee meeting which they sat in on um and they've got a clear understanding of what we're looking for well that's interesting because i don't <laughs> i have no clear understanding of what we're looking for I mean, after that meeting, I sat on that committee that turned into a committee of the whole. Um, we clearly, I think, made a statement we were looking for a $43 million underground park project that we perhaps would like to see some synergies between the land that the city owns and what Faison is doing on their properties. But it wasn't 
quite clear to me that there was a vision internally from the city, either from our planning department or from this council with the direction of landmark as to where to go. So um, I'm super skeptical about all this, as you know, and have been since day one. I'm just one of 13, but um, I'm just wondering what it's going to look like in 60 days, what's going to be different. Well, I'm clear what I want to see. Um, council member. Mayor. No, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, council, I, council, council Brady. Yes, yeah, thank you. I haven't even heard yet. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, there's a lot of knowledge uh, sitting around this table, including some members who have uh, been seated here since before uh, I was in college, uh, which I turned 40 in August. Uh, and, and some members seated around the table who have been here since before the inception of this project. Um, and so I, there has been ample time uh, seated around this table for input on this project uh, as it's gone forward, its various iterations. Um, and so it, just, it, it strikes me as, as odd that in the season of uh, the year that we're in, as we're entering uh, that season heading towards the fall, uh, that there's all of a sudden that we're going to put a break on development in West Ashley. Uh, that we're the most significant investment in West Ashley, um, especially being able to come out with a civic center um, that would give our citizens access to city offices, that would give us a place uh, when we take our show on the road that's not uh, just meeting in a gym at a rec center. Uh, that we could have and and i i don't disagree and you know we we have talked about this before um obviously we want to make sure that uh we're being proper stewards of the taxpayers money but if we were talking about spending 45 million dollars on parking in downtown charleston and we were going to build another garage uh for that i don't even know that there would be a debate on this to be honest but we're talking about parking in West Ashley in the gateway to the city for something that will activate development down one of the most commercial corridors in West Ashley. And all of a sudden we're now putting the brakes on this when there's been ample time from the knowledge around this table to do that and put the brakes on previously. So it strikes me as a tad opportunistic that we're sitting here trying to pump the brakes on this when we wouldn't be doing this in other parts of the city, but now West Ashley can get a win. It can get a nice win. I agree with you, Councilmember Gregory. West Ashley deserves something world-class. It's the birthplace of one of the oldest cities in the United States. It deserves that. But let's look at the facts on the ground. When we put this out to bid, there was one bidder. There wasn't anybody beating down the door to come for this project. We have a good proposal, and I agree. Let's let them come back. We've gotten the feedback. But this needs to happen for West Ashley. We need to invest in West Ashley at this gateway. I represent the outer portion, right? Beast Ferry Road corridor. But this part, because of our transportation network, isn't that far. I have plenty of people that go to this area. I go to that area. You know, see several council members over there from time to time. It's a vital gathering point that we have to activate for this area. And not only from a commercial and from an office perspective, we've talked about wanting to keep jobs in West Ashley, offices can help do that. But we have to make sure that our citizens feel connected. And when we hold meetings at 3 p.m. downtown, 4 p.m. downtown on a Monday and a Tuesday, how connected do the citizens actually feel to the government here? when we could be doing these meetings located in an area where the majority of the population lives. I think this project activates that and I will be supporting it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So, so Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to share, um, I think Landmark was listening when we had the meeting uh, a week or 10 days ago you yourself, Mr. Chairman, asked for some options. You said you like to go shopping. I still and, do. And um, world class. And and that's the intent of um, of uh, this extension to to allow them to bring an option. If if I may say, a, a a key component of 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 I think 
the need for this option was uh, all around the parking of all things. Initially, um, to, to robustly develop the site, it was, um, it was proposed that there be a, a, a parking deck, above ground parking. And, and I think there was general agreement amongst uh, even some members of council here, among the public, uh, among the ULI study that was done that an above ground uh, parking deck at this location was not the most appropriate thing, uh, certainly not the most desired thing. And so that led us to ask Landmark, well, go figure out what it would, would look like and cost to do the parking underground, which led to this, what I feel is a very excellent proposal that we have on the table um, currently. But to, to, to give you, Mr. Chairman, and Council the options of, um, of an alternative, it, it, the, the heartburn, the major heartburn was over the cost of this underground parking. And uh, I heard it from, from a number of my colleagues here. So, so we've asked Landmark, and they were listening, to, to give us an option that would not include uh, underground parking and hence reduce the, the, the cost substantially. Of course, that parking helped to, um, was a requirement of the amount of square footage that they were putting on the site. So if you're gonna get rid of that underground parking and you're not gonna build a deck, then you basically, um, council member Seekins says, you gotta reduce the square footage of the overall development. So, but here's the thing. Um, um, they, they look to maintain the part of the development that included public use um, uh, and a gathering space, a meeting space for us to have city council meetings or other public meetings like DRB or even be able to make it available uh, for our citizens for a rental or something like that. But, but also have that green space, that park-like feature that you see out at Box and Crate that citizens uh, seem to really enjoy that we could have that kind of feel, family feel at this development, West Ashley, where we could have, um, you know, uh, maybe we'd choose to have the farmer's market there rather than at Ackerman Park, or we'd have a, a, a movie shown on a Friday night, or we'd have a Piccolo Spoleto event during Piccolo or Moja event during Moja, have that, still have that public space and that meeting space, but overall reduce the, the square footage overall and the density so that the, the parking can be accommodated on site. That's the option that we're shooting for. And uh, if they get the 60 days, they'll be able to come up with a conceptual plan and bring it back to us. And we'll, you'll be able to go shopping. I'd like to go shopping yeah. there. Yes, sir. Um, and when I go shopping there uh, and I come to a place that is the gateway, I'm thinking about a fountain like that big old pineapple fountain that we've got going over there in that park. When I'm talking world class, I'm talking world class. It may even cost more, but it needs to be world class and not like every other city USA. Any more discussion on the, yes, um, Councilman Bow. And, and I appreciate that. And I want <clears throat> citizens of West Ashley and citizens of the city, uh, and frankly, people who come to visit this who don't live in this city, uh, to have exactly what they want, what they need, and what they deserve. What I hear is a whole lot of what we want. Um, and, and frankly, I, I would encourage y'all to talk to folks in West Ashley like I have been. I'd frankly be really interested to know what property owners and business owners along Sam Rittenberg and in that area of West Ashley would like to see us do with this. I bet they would like to see a transformative investment in West Ashley. I bet what our citizens would not love to hear um, and, and what I feel like they, well, what they certainly feel like they have heard since time immemorial is nickel and diming West Ashley. Um, I think we deserve more than stormwater projects. I think we deserve more than potholes getting filled. Those are core functions of government. We obviously need to go a little bit further to revitalize West Ashley. If we're nickel and diming this, we're not doing that. And, and that's just the reality. I'd love to see what Landmark comes back with. They have done 
an extraordinary job so far of delivering exactly what we've asked them for and exactly what people want in West Ashley. I think it's time to give people what they want and stop talking quite so much about what we want. It's, it's kind of hard to determine what you want if you've not seen all the possibilities. <laughs> and I think that that's what I'm talking about. I, I agree with you totally, okay. But if you don't show me all the possibilities, okay, then I'm not making an informed decision. But so for me, it's very important that the residents of, of West Ashley see all the possibilities of that site. I'm sorry, Council Member Parker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll try to be real quick. So Council Member Sheed, I know that you have worked so hard on this and I understand that. And, you know, I don't want to see anything dead tonight, but I don't, I hope and pray that that's not the case. And I know that whatever happens on that site, you'll be involved and you'll be committed to it and it will be fabulous. Um, listen, I agree that James Island, John's Island, West Ashley, we all have that commonality. When we are sitting in here talking about 45 million for the peninsula, we don't bat an eye. If it's James Island, John's Island, West Ashley, we do. We tend to talk about it a little more. And that, and that shouldn't be the case. Um, I do just, I agree with Council Member Gregory. I think that I feel like there's another option here and it's not being, you know, I'd like to see that. That needs to be presented. I don't know if that has, if that's landmark or if it's something or someone else. Um, I, I also respect that, you know, y'all in West Ashley, I completely take your guidance as, as to what your constituents want. Um, and again, I know it, if and when I want the same thing on James Island, you know, I'd hope that you'd be a voice for us over there. But I just don't know if this is it. So that is my concern with extending this, you know, with this extension. Are we are we saying, yes, we're doing this, or are we just having another 60-day discussion? So that's my, those are my thoughts. Thank you. I, I do have one point. Yes. Um, because I've heard this a couple of times about nickel and diamond, uh, right. West yeah. Ashley. All due respect, Councilman Bowden, a parking garage space usually costs, and that's because a lot of people around the table have been involved with building parking garages and how much does parking garage space normally cost. Now, a lot of things got topsy-turvy since uh, COVID. But a parking space costs somewhere around a parking garage, believe it or not, about twenty-five to $29,000 per space. The parking space for this underground is costing $85,000 for one space. I mean, that's a hundred more than 150% more. Those are millions of dollars that can be built, spent above the ground for the citizens of West Ashley, literally, that all come and visit this area can enjoy, as opposed to being under the ground with a world-class underground parking garage. We can have millions of dollars if we came up with another opportunity, mm -hmm. another way to park for aspects that people can literally enjoy. Mm -hmm. So that's not nickel and diamond. If they came up with an $85,000 <laughs> uh, per space park garage on the peninsula, we'd be pushing back on that as well. Um, that's the part that um, it's like uh, somehow we don't want to do for West Ashley. I'm born and red for West Ashley. There's nobody wants to see, including Councilman Shahid. He wants it, but he doesn't want it more than me. And it may be a photo finish. <laughs> but, but, but that's right. We got arm wrestling. But, so we want it. But you know what? To get this done and to do more for West Ashley, uh, when you handle other people's monies, uh, you a fiduciary. And we have a right to uh, we, we shouldn't do $85,000 of parking space. That's just it. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Mitchell. Yeah. Didn't. I was sitting here. I wasn't going to say anything at all. I was just listening, listening, listening. And I heard, you know, a couple of my colleagues say we had people here was long, who had long tenures here. Yeah, I was here a long tenure, 20 years. Yes, and I've been through a whole lot in this council and tried to make decisions I feel it's best for the whole city of Charleston, that's James Allen, John Allen, West Ashley, wherever the case may be. And every time we look, somebody's knocking and say, uh, West Ashley didn't get this, West Ashley didn't get that. And I keep informing them that, like I say, it's one Charleston, one city. It's only one, you know, and even with the peninsula, I keep saying here in this 
council chambers all the time that, you know, in the city of Charleston, we always, always had a nucleus. The nucleus was what the peninsula and everything that stems from the, the nucleus. That's what science taught me. So we have, we always trying to get the, the nucleus correct and get it right and extend out to these other areas, James Island, Jones Island, Daniels Island, which I represented Jones, I mean, uh, Daniels Island in 1998. And I, it moved me over into the peninsula. So I was all over the place. West Ashley, I know West Ashley too. I lived in West Ashley, lived all around it. And I said, it's not about what's going on here. We want West Ashley to be the best, just like any other places. But when I heard about the, uh, the parking situation, the money that we have spent, and we said we are good caretakers of the money that's coming in here from, for the residents of the city of Charleston, that was the biggest thing in my dilemma. And I told Councilman Shahid that I wanted the, um, the center so we can have a place to go to so far as council meeting or wherever the case may be. I was all for that. That was one of the biggest thing I was for because I, years and years when I was sitting here, everybody was coming through this door. And every time that door opened, I was there turning around to look to see who was coming through that door because I don't know who was coming in there. Uh, looking over my head to see what's happening during that time, all these years. So these are the things that I was looking at, but when it come to that parking, it wasn't, I heard the money, and I said, we are supposed to be good stewards of the money, and we're talking about that type of money for a parking space? We have never done that since I was here, that type of money. I don't care what kind of development is going on. We have never put that kind of money in a parking space. People, they say, oh, the people that want underground parking. Okay, it's fine what you want. I have been against a lot of time in my district, the district I represent, so to speak, against my constituents on certain things because what they see, what they want, that's not, might not be the best thing in the world for them until it was built. They say, oh, that was, oh, it's, it's all right now. So you have to make some decisions that's not best for everyone, but you know wholeheartedly that's the best thing that happens for the city of Charleston. And this is what we're here sitting for, is best what's best for the city of Charleston. Because half of what's going on now, we will see half the city of Charleston that we know of is not the city of Charleston now. So far as residents is concerned, I'm talking about. So I, I was ready to vote. And I was going to vote for the extension until everybody started talking. And that turned me around. I said, all this bunch of talk, 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 you know, and, and this kind of turned me around. Now they had me confused. Not that they're confused that I don't know what's going on, but they're confused that everybody is talking, talking. And I said, okay, that's it. When we voted on it a few minutes ago, it would have been approved for the 60 days. And I was going right along with it. But after all this conversation that I'd already heard before, in the last council meeting, the same thing I hear again tonight, I said, man, that's enough of that, you know? So I want to see some alternatives. I want to see the best thing. They said, okay, that's the gateway to the city of Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, let's do it. If we're going to do it, let's do the best we do it. But we don't have to have the parking garage on the ground to do it. But we can have the entrance coming into the city, uh, into this area called this South Carolina, the best. That's not going to be the best. I was here when the picnic Wiggly was there when they tore it down. I know it wasn't. I said, what are they going to do with it? What does the city want with it? We need to get rid of it anyway. It was a dump. It looked like a dump. So I don't know which way I'm going to go now, but I don't know. You just have me. I just going to, I always just sit down and you'll see me hold my head down and pray and I come and vote. And that's what I do. Period. Two or three quick points. Number one, that council member Dudley, 100%. It needs to be grand without any question. And what I would recommend that we do is we, we put a time on, on, on Landmark to come back within 30 days, give us a preliminary report on what we're doing. One thing for certain, one thing for certain, the underground garage is DEAD, it's dead. That's not gonna happen. The question may be, is it a surface lot or do we add some more buildings to, to we require an above ground garage? But, but this is so critically important that 
having all of it, all of us engage in this process and be and have a critical eye to it is is very important that we that we do that. So, Landmark had the opportunity to walk away from this after our uh, executive session. They they've stepped up to the plate. They want to see this thing completed. They're eager. They're, they've been they've been listening to me and I've been yelling and screaming at them and and they put up a lot of crap for me. But I think that when we if we vote this yes, we will all be engaged into this process <laughs> and we'll all be part of this birthing process, Councilman Mawaring, and we all will take part in making sure we're grand. World class. World class. I'll, I'll call the <laughs> Any further this yes, Councilman Bowen. All right. Look, when I said nickel and dime, what I meant is take away what's actually going to draw people here, leave what's not going to draw people here, and then waste city money on that. And that is what we are hurtling towards. Um, and I, I'll tell you right now, I want no part in that. Um, and and I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would love to. I would love to. What's going to draw people here? is the restaurant space, is the retail space. It's not the government space. The government space is, fan, is fantastic. It's very helpful to the citizens of West Ashley, but it's not the draw. The, the businesses are. The businesses require parking. The space doesn't have space, the parcel doesn't have space for parking, and so we need to get creative. It's going to be expensive. Have we built a city garage in 2023? We have not. 2023 dollars are different. It is going to cost more money. If we, when I said nickel and dime, I mean, take away all the things that are going to draw people here, leave whatever's left, and then we are just lighting city money on fire. Um, and, you know, that's, that's my personal opinion. That is, I certainly do not speak for any of my colleagues, but I wouldn't vote for that. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's hard for me to believe that we haven't gathered the input of, again, business owners, property owners al along Sam Rittenberg, who I just feel pretty strongly would, would be in favor of this and would be somewhat shocked that we're passing up the opportunity to do it. Um, we've, got a, we've got a great plan in front of us. I didn't, you know, when, when I said nickel and dime, I, I simply meant taking away what would actually draw people here. And it's, it's just not worth it to do that. For appell. I promise I'm going to be really quick. Um, let me um, state my position. I don't think the original plan is DEAD dead. I think we need to keep that plan on the table. I think we need to compare and contrast it with what Landmark comes forward with so we can make a choice for what's best for West Ashley. Do we want to have the active, engaged, synergistic, dynamic development that's on the table that's going to cost a little bit more? Or do we want to just have something that looks nice and with some government um, uh, buildings? It's, it, it's not that that's a bad concept or a wrong concept. It's a different concept. It's not doing the same sort of thing. It's not the same catalyst. And I think that let's, let's all hold our judgment until we have both options in front of us and we'll make a decision at that point. So I just want to say, let's not give up on any of the options yet. Thanks. Ready for the question. Can we do a roll call? And the motion on the floor is to approve the real estate report as amended. Yes. As amended. As amended. So, so you'd you're like to pull out E. <laughs> Six. As a point of order, there was already a motion on the floor from Council Member Appel. Uh, to approve the real estate report, so he would need to amend that uh, as suggested by council receiving. So amended. Okay. So we're only going to vote on everything but E. Okay. Right. All, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Now let's take E separately. Do I hear a motion for E? As amended. As amended. Right. It's been moved and properly seconded. No further discussion. All in favor. Request a roll call vote. Okay. 
And council members Greg, Sheely, and Sacrin are absent. Council member Mitchell. I have had the board nay. Council member Brady. Aye. Council member Gregory. Aye. Council member Waring. Aye. Council member Seekings. Council member Shade. Council member Bowden. Council member Pell. Council member Parker. Nay. Mayor Tecklenburg, uh, the motion carries. Is there anything else to be brought before this committee? If not, may we request a five minute recess between now and council? Let me let me adjourn it. Okay. <laughs> this meeting's adjourned. You got five minutes.